Hi there, and welcome to our presentation on the rotational stability of plastic hinges. I'm Michael Roberts, and this paper was co-written with Professor J.M. Davies. I'll give a quick overview of the presentation. Um, I'll talk about the background and terminology first, then a couple of methods of how hinges can be modelled, uh, before looking at how they can be used in semi-full-scale buildings, and then give a few conclusions. In terms of the background, basically warehouses have been getting larger and larger year on year. Uh, this is due to current trends in e-commerce and home delivery, where basically more and more storage space is required as people spend more and more online. And while the size of the buildings has increased significantly, the basic design philosophies have not actually changed that much in the past 40 years or so. So this has prompted a response from SCOS, and I'd just like to read out this uh, small section. It says, the overall concern with large clad steel frames is that not enough is known, either theoretically or in reality, about their performance. It is not safe to extrapolate from experience on smaller buildings. So there have been a few failures, and it's worth noting that these failures have all taken place in the cladding systems, not in the mainframes themselves. Um, but bearing in mind this effect of scale, we thought it would be interesting to look at the design of the mainframes and see what we can find. So I'd like to very quickly go through some of the terminology that I'll be using in this presentation. Uh, so this is a portal frame. It's a moment resisting frame and it's very efficient for spanning large areas with a minimum number of internal columns. So haunches can be added at the eaves and the apex and in the UK they're typically an offcut of the rafter. This allows for deeper bolt groups to help transmit the moment around the frame, as well as increasing the moment capacity in the areas of maximum moment. And it also serves to reduce the flexibility and hence the deflections. Plastic design, is similar to elastic design, requires a number of load combinations to be analyzed. So initially the structure is analyzed and the bending moments are calculated. The load factor is then systematically increased until a section reaches its moment capacity and a hinge forms. The analysis then continues with this hinge in place until enough hinges are created that a complete collapse mechanism is formed. Um, and plastic analysis results in a more efficient design compared to a corresponding elastic analysis, which means a lighter, more slender structure. In the previous slide, I mentioned plastic hinges, and plastic hinges are an idealized way to model plasticity. They assume that with increasing moment, the rotation also increases linearly until the section reaches its yield stress through the entire depth of the section. And for simplicity, it's assumed this happens instantaneously. And at this point, the rotation may increase with no corresponding increase in bending moment. And in design, it's usually this bilinear moment rotation curve, which is assumed. Uh, so, of course, in reality, we know that uh, steel uh, exhibits hardening behavior. And this means that the simple, simplified hinge behavior is not entirely accurate. We see a sort of hardening behavior of the hinge. And the question is, can we utilize this in design models? And the answer is yes, we can. Um, analyses have existed for a long time that are able to do this. Uh, more important question is, should we utilize this in design? And one of the problems is that instabilities, local bucklings, uh, can occur in the flange and the web sections. And that means that this moment rotation curve doesn't continue indefinitely. Um, it drops off quite rapidly. The simplest method of including plasticity uh, and strain hardening in a model is using Horn's theory of linear hardening. Uh, Horn basically said that the increase in moment above the uh, moment capacity is directly proportional to the plastic rotation of the hinge multiplied uh, by the flexural stiffness. H is a value which takes account of the moment gradient and K is a constant which depends on the stress strain behavior as well as the cross section of the uh, profile. So this is a very convenient way of doing things. Uh, very little changes from current design methodology. Uh, there's a little difficulty in calculating H and in particular for a region of uniform moments, H is undefined. K is also a little difficult to calculate because it depends on both the stress strain behavior and the cross section profile. And also no instability is accounted for using this method. 
A second method that we looked at is um, numerical integration. Basically, you can take any general stress strain curve and by increasing the curvature and assuming that the uh, strain remains linear through the cross section, you can calculate the stresses, which gives an equivalent moment by integration. And by doing this and increasing the curvature systematically, you can produce a moment curvature plot like this. Then for any problem, you can use uh, any problem which is statically determinate. You can calculate the bending moment and then use the bending moment to calculate the curvature. And by integrating once, you get the rotations and a second time, you'll get the deflections. Uh, this is fairly useful for statically determinant problems. Uh, it's very fast, very simple, and fairly accurate. Um, and it can be used for calculating the K value, which I mentioned in the previous slide. Uh, slide. However, there's still no account taken of instabilities. The final one, I'm not going to go to in too much detail. I think most people listening are very aware of finite element modeling, um, using 2D or 3D elements to build up the sections. Um, obviously, it's very general, material uh, nonlinearities can be included, the geometry is included, uh, residual stresses can be included through Signy and Abacus. Um, local and global instabilities can be accounted for using perturbed geometries. Uh, you can use this to model either single beams like this as well as small or medium sized structures. Uh, the disadvantages of this is obviously it takes quite a lot of time to build these models. Uh, and it can take a lot of time to analyze them and even more time to troubleshoot the problems when the analysis fails to converge for the hundredth time. And <laughs> uh, there's quite a lot of potential for mistakes. Uh, uh, if we compare the results of these various options, uh, we can see that by comparing against actual test results, which were conducted by Byfield and Nethercott, um, the integration method gives a very good match. However, it's because uh, instabilities are not taken account of, uh, it continues fairly indefinitely. And FE analysis, however, is able to capture the buckling and this uh, resulting droop in the curve. Uh, it's worth pointing out that for this four point bending problem, the beam model wouldn't actually predict any strain hardening, and this is because the value of K uh, is undefined for the unit moment across the center. We then go on to modeling of full buildings. So we're comparing now the B models and the abacus models. Um, the B models in general use the minimum number of elements. They're conducted in 2D and they're very, very similar to the design models which are used you know, in consultancy. The abacus models are modeled in as much detail as possible using 2D shell elements. Uh, the S4R elements were used. Uh, there's no inclusion of welding thickness. Uh, local buckling was allowed for but the models were rigidly constrained in the plane uh, at the location of the purlins to match the tests. Um, and for the abacus models, residual stresses were included through sig ini uh, according to the EC distribution that you can see here. And the tested material strength uh, was used and um, the strain hardening properties were optionally included. And in addition, um, a RICS analysis with large displacements was utilized. For each building, mesh sensitivity was carried out. And in general, it was found that provided more than two elements were in the webs uh, to prevent shear locking, uh, the results were quite good. Uh, so the first building that was analyzed was this uh, five meter tall, four meter wide um, North Light portal. And I'll go through these results in a little more detail and then I'll go quite quickly through the rest of the buildings. So initially you can see this first order plastic analysis, this is the red line labelled skit, and this gives fairly good results, uh, in particular compared to the abacus results, which is labelled, it's a screen one labelled with large deflections. Um, however, it's noticeable that the test results did continue, uh, the vertical load could continue, whereas the first order analyses we're not able to capture that. Um, when you include second order effects, which is this uh, green line, this is the beam model again, you can see that there's a little bit more flexibility creeping in and the um, ultimate load, the ultimate vertical load was a little lower. And uh, finally, the most important one, when you include second order effects and strain hardening, you can see that both Abacus and the beam model were able to uh, capture this increase 
in strength quite accurately. So importantly, the failure modes in both models were the same. And it's interesting, this test, because the structure didn't actually quite fail, uh, but rather the loading equipment came to rest on the ground, as can be seen in the photo. Um, however, you can see from the uh, load deflection curve that it's very close to failure. And it's also worth noting that this is the uh, abacus results superposed, where you can see the location of the plastic hinges, the spread of plasticity, um, and the deflected shape matches really, really well. Uh, this is a second building, and once again, uh, you can see that the FE results with strain hardening and second order effects match the tested results relatively closely. However, when strain hardening isn't included, there's a significant uh, underestimate of the vertical load. Another building was analysed. This is a two-span portal frame. Uh, these were five meter spans and about three and a half meters tall with fairly slender rafters. Um, once again, the beam elements model was able to follow the test results with remarkable accuracy. And the final one is this uh, building with very, very slender rafters. This is the largest frame that was tested as part of the Abington series. And this is probably the most clearly that you can see that um, if only second order effects are included, which is this uh, bottom green line, that the uh, failure, of the collapse load is underestimated significantly. And when both second order effects and strain hardening are included, the match is very, very good with the tested results. So in conclusion, beam models are usually used for plastic design. However, currently the second order effects are not included analytically. Um, code methods or approximate methods such as alpha crit are used. Uh, similarly, strain hardening isn't included, but this is seen as an additional reserve of safety. Uh, both strain hardening and second order effects can clearly be accurately included analytically, as has been the case for a number of years, um, using exactly the same models and will always give better results than approximate methods. So this was a work in progress. Uh, obviously, further research is required. Uh, to look at exactly how much rotation capacity some of these larger sections actually have. Um, validated models, such as the ones uh, that you've seen, have been run with larger sections. Uh, initially, it suggests that there may be more susceptibility to local buckling, um, but also there's a lot of sensitivity to the initial perturbation, so more research is required. Um, it's worth noting, once again, that no catastrophic failures of large warehouse structures have actually occurred. Um, the research suggests that the majority of horizontal loading is actually resisted by the cladding and that vertical loading will also be resisted by the cladding once a few plastic hinges form. Thank you very much for your time and welcome any questions.